Hi. Here we are going to solve a problem involving fluid statics on a surface submerged in a multi-layered fluid. The problem is taken from a book written by Eunice A. Sengel and John M. Simbala, Fluid Mechanics Fundamentals and Applications, 3rd edition, Problem 3 to 73. For a gate width of 2 meters into the paper, determine the force required to hold the gate ABC at its location. This problem involves a hinge at point A. We are going to assume that there is no friction at the hinge, so that there is no reaction moment at A. We also assume that atmospheric pressure acts on all sides of the gate, so that it can be ignored. The weight of the gate is not mentioned in the problem. Hence, we assume that its value is negligible. To solve this problem, let's start by measuring the force due to water pressure on the gate. The gate receives pressure from two layer of fluids, a fluid with a specific gravity of 0.86 acts on the surface vertical surface AD, and a fluid with a specific gravity of 1.23 acts on the vertical surface DB, and horizontal surface BC. First, let's consider the vertical surface AB. As the specific gravities, or mass densities, of the two fluids are not the same, the triangles representing the pressure distribution have different slopes. However, at the interface D, the pressure produced by the fluid above is the same with the pressure produced by the fluid below. One way to calculate the resultant force representing these two pressure distributions is by dividing the pressure distribution into several simple shapes. Here we divide into four simple shapes. A rectangle 1, a triangle 2, a rectangle 3, and a triangle 4. For each shape, we are going to calculate the resultant force and its point of application. At horizontal surface A, which is at the depth of OA equals 0.4 meters, the pressure is rho 1 times G times OA. Here, rho 1 is the mass density of the fluid with specific gravity equals 0.86, so rho 1 equals 860 kilograms per meter cube. The value of the pressure at A is the same with the lower part of the rectangle 1. Its value is 3374.64 Pascal. At horizontal surface D, which is at the depth of OD equals 0.5 meters, the pressure is rho 1 times G times OD. The value of this pressure is the same with the lower part of the rectangle 3. We obtain PD equals 4218.3 Pascal. The pressure representing the base of the triangle 2 can be obtained by subtracting PD by PA. It gives PE equals 843.66 Pascal. The pressure representing the base of the triangle 4 is calculated using rho 2 times G times BD, where rho 2 is the mass density of the fluid with specific gravity 1.23, rho 2 equals 1230 kg per meter cube, and BD is the vertical distance from B to D, which is 0.8 meters. We obtain PF equals 9,653.04 Pascal. The sum of PD and PF represents the pressure at B. PB equals 13,871.34 Pascal. Now let's break down all the shapes, so that we can see clearly them. For each of these shapes, we sum up the pressure distribution by taking into consideration the width of the gate, which is 2 meters. This is to obtain the resultant force, or total pressure, for each shape. FR1 is the resultant force for the rectangle 1. It equals to the pressure PA, times the area of surface AD. 
we can consider this value as the pressure volume of a box formed by PA in the area of the surface AD. With the same analogy, FR2 represents the pressure volume of a wedge formed by triangle 2 in the area of the surface AD. The same, FR3 represents the pressure volume of a rectangle box formed by rectangle 3 in the area of the surface BD. And finally, FR4 represents the pressure volume of a wedge formed by triangle 4 in the area of the surface BD. We put all values given, and from what we obtained previously into these equations. And we obtain the resultant force for each shape of pressure volume. FR1 equals 674.93 Newton. FR2 equals 84.37 Newton. FR3 equals 6749.28 Newton. And FR4 equals 7722.43 Newton. Now we calculate the point of application of the resultant forces obtained previously. The point of application, or total pressure, is nothing else than the centroid of each of these shapes. Let's name it P1, P2, P3, P4, the location of the center of pressure of rectangle 1, triangle 2, rectangle 3, and triangle 4 respectively. We know that the centroid of a rectangle is in the middle, and the centroid of a triangle is at two-thirds from the top. Hence, we can calculate the location of the center of pressure for each shape as written here. We measure the distance of each center of pressure to point A, because, later, we are going to calculate moments about point A. We obtain the distance from A to P1 equals 0.05 meters. The distance from A to P2 is 0.07 meters. The distance from A to P3 equals half a meter. And the distance from A to P4 equals 0.63 meters. Now, let's consider the horizontal surface BC. The pressure at B is the same as the pressure at C. It is what we found previously for point B, which is 13,871.34 Pascal. The pressure distribution above BC is represented by a rectangle. Or, by considering the width of the gate, it is a rectangular box, where the volume represents the resultant force. Here I name it FRBC. The resultant force, or the pressure volume, is equal to the height, the magnitude of pressure, times the width of BC, times the depth, or the width of the gate. We obtain, FRBC equals 11,097.07 Newton. Now, we need the perpendicular distance from A to the center of pressure of FRBC, which is PBC. It is a rectangle, thus it is in the middle of BC, or 0.2 meters from B. Hence, the horizontal distance from A to PBC is also 0.2 meters. To complete the free body diagram of the gate ABC, we draw the reaction forces at A, which are AX and AY, for a frictionless hinge. We don't need to calculate these reaction forces, as we are going to use point A for moment calculation. So, apart from AX and AY, we have the following forces applied to the gate ABC, horizontal forces FR1, FR2, FR3 and FR4, all directed to the right with perpendicular distances from A given by AP1, AP2, AP3, and AP4 respectively. We have two vertical forces, one is FRBC applied at PBC at a horizontal distance from A represented by APBC and the force F located at C at a horizontal distance from A represented by BC. This force F is the one that we need to calculate to hold the gate in its location, in other words, to maintain its static equilibrium. We apply the static equilibrium in terms of moments. We take the sum of moments about point A, so that we can ignore the reaction forces AX and AY. The gate is in a static equilibrium, thus the sum of moments is zero. We sum up all the multiplication of forces with their respective perpendicular distance from A, with the convention anti-clockwise direction as positive moment. 
here we have the moment produced by every force is positive, all anti-clockwise, except the moment produced by the force F, clockwise. We put all the values that we have in the equation. We obtain the value of F equals 26,247.1 Newton, or roughly equals 26.25 kN. We obtain a positive value of force, it means its direction is correct, which is upward. With this, we solved the problem.